Hello guys and welcome back to part 2 of the completion of Terminus The Walking Dead series. So part 1 was pretty much the outline and basic of, basis of this build. Today is all about detailing and when I say detailing we are going to be going overboard with the amount of detail shown in an episode. The detail I achieved in this took so many hours it was hard to fit it all into a 30 minute video but nonetheless I did do so and let's get on with it. So to recap one of the main reasons I decided to take on this build was not only because it's a very ionic um, build within the Walking Dead series but there is so many different areas to texture and uh, well recreate and what I liked about it is there's not one area is the same as another um, if you're well, if you have a look on YouTube and some of the uh, Google screenshots of Terminus, you'll see there's so many different textures. We've got the grassy areas over in the corners. We've got some of the sort of worn out dirt, uh, sort of dried out areas as well, as well as the different types of concrete, which we'll come to a bit later on. But the first stage is this top hand corner, which is the, well, the greenest area of the actual build. And we are using the... Um, props and foliage from P. Delmo who does some absolutely amazing amazing work on anything relating to, to trees grass and shrubs etc so by all means get onto the workshop and check out his channel I'll drop a link in the description below so you can have a look at that in a bit more detail but he does some amazing work and it's all very low poly as well so you can get away with sort of putting down a lot a lot to make a dense area and not suffer too much with uh, your frames per second and what we're doing here is I wanted to create a sort of track through as you can see the fences um, which have been pushed down and broken down I wanted to sort of create a little pathway through there to sort of show that people have been pushing their way through to get into the actual train yard itself which creates another story really was that before or after the zombie invasions we'll leave that to yourself but what we're doing now is using some of the decors um, to sort of create a sort of overcarry of the sort of dirt and dust onto the pavement. And just going quickly back to the shrubs I just created in the grass area, one thing that's amazing about these new releases on the workshop of, uh, of new trees and grass effects etc is the combinations you can now create. As you can see what I've been able to achieve there is a combination of a number of different um, creations from Pidelmo added together to create a completely different look and you'll see the same here um, I love this this grass here it's very nice and thick and you can really blend it in nicely with the addition of other um, lighter grasses and darker and again there is a darker green area in the terminus build but the majority of this land is very dry and wasted so adding in some lighter colors into the grass really does give that nice effect over and not only was it the uh, grounds that were covered in the grass, the actual tracks themselves. So the only thing I found difficult in this build was making these tracks look like they were sort of unused and sort of worn out. Um, looking on the maps, they're sort of covered in a lot of dirt and, and ground, um, sort of shrubs and weeds, etc. So I wanted to try and create that as best I could to sort of hide away the rail track, but not so much that you can't see it. Um, to sort of give that idea that it you know, was once used and using the moss as well from the workshop does really help with that effect. So I wanted to try and create that to the best as I could. Now this section here is an interesting one. This is going back to my earlier comment on the different types of concrete. So the concretes we've got as decals on the workshop and obviously the um, surface painter are all very light um, sort of greys. And looking at the actual terminus build, there is a lot of sort of yellowy concrete. So what I've decided to do with the um, terrain that I've created is place down some of the yellow um, areas. And you think to yourself, it looks a bit silly at the moment, but with a lot of it, um, trial and error, I worked out that if we add down some of the uh, decals, and these are the uh, worn roadways, I believe, Adding those down here, you can already see straight away that we're starting to lose that yellow and we're getting more of a, a yellowy grey colour. And we're far from complete here, but it gives you the idea of what we're trying to create here. And 
It was something that I came across purely by accident. I, I thought I'd just trial it out and see what happened, not expecting to get the final results you'll end up seeing, which do look incredible in my opinion. So we are just pretty much just covering this over and we do end up using a number of different decors just to sort of cover this area up. Um, and it took a little bit of trial and error to get it looking perfectly well to the to what I wanted it to look like. So it does take some time and there's a lot of um, sort of removal and trying of different decals, but in the end it works out fine. I think the main issue we had really was if you put too many on top of one another, you do get the flickering screeny effect. But um, as you can see here, placing down a number of them as best we can. It really does bring out a brand new look to City Skylines. I mean, there's nothing out on the workshop that can resemble this sort of a look. So you really do, you know, as long as you find the right combinations and you don't go over the top in terms of how many um, decals you put over one another, you can achieve some absolutely amazing, amazing textures. And whilst the amazing workshop guys could create something a lot better and a lot more realistic, until that time, creating your own not only is fun, but it just makes you feel like you're involved in the game a lot more. And as you can see now, these yellow spots have completely, well, they've disappeared, but not disappeared in the sense of you can't see them because what lies beneath them is another different texture than what we've been able to create before on top of the grey. So that's certainly something for you guys to sort of mess around with and, and sort of trial out and see what you can achieve. You can certainly do something incredible. It just takes time and a bit of perseverance. So I did say at the start of this video, this is gonna be a lot of detailing. And as you can see, we've done the same. I did skip a bit of time because I didn't wanna bore you guys too much with another time lapse of doing the same thing. But as you can see here, we've done a similar, similar thing as what we did um, on the front area to the back area. So we've uh, added over the decors and sort of created another another look with the yellowy concrete as well, which does look amazing. And I wanted to add some darker textures in as well to sort of bring out some different looks. And I mean, what I did find with the yellow concrete bits that I did create is uh, if you add a, a few textures around them um, on the outskirts, it does bring in nicely the actual design. It doesn't look too like it's just been plopped in the middle. It sort of blends in a lot better. And now this section here, you'll see a new road has been created on the outskirts of the Terminus build. And this is built pretty much like for like in terms of realism. And we're gonna create a little sort of industrial estate around the build as well. I, I always like to uh, build out as best I can in these builds, but obviously if I did it all the way, we'd end up creating a complete build and it will kind of ruin the fact that we're building a terminus building here. So this is just a little bit just to sort of edge out the actual design. So I wanted to add a little bit of the outskirts of the building as well to sort of blend it in a little bit better. So we're working on this here and again using some amazing props from Avania and Bearded Monkey um, and the barns as well. Yep. So we're going to use those to sort of create this uh, this next build. And you'll soon see and it's custom built um, prop, here they are, from P. Delmo. So he's created these beautiful sort of sticks and sort of dying out um, sort of bushes and trees um, purposely for the Walking Dead series. So firstly, thank you very much P. Delmo for being involved in this project. They are on the workshop as well. So if you wanna check that out, like I said earlier, his link is in the description below and you'll be able to find them for yourself. Um, so yeah. The combination of these um, different decals in this corner here was just to create a different type of feeling and to add the dirt area around. And I wanted to have the trees and some of the foliage coming through the fences to sort of create the overgrown look um, that Terminus uh, represents in its actual design. Now I always find it difficult in these smaller builds in terms of how to sort of finish the build off. I mean, obviously if you look at this from high up, you'll be able to see all the space that isn't actually created. So I always try and give that sort of look and feeling that there is a lot more outside of what you can actually see in the visions. And you'll probably notice that from my uh, time-lapse videos, um, cinematic views and sort of photos. I always try and create something um, to either barrier or just 
hired away the areas that haven't actually got anything into them just to give that um, ambience of uh, like I say something else is already out there so I always tend to build up some trees on either side just to sort of create that and a little tip that I tend to do now is I sort of raise up the area um, on the outside of the trees themselves just to sort of give that sort of arc feeling that you can't see over the trees um, but there could be something over there that sort of thing really just adds to the build itself to give you that perception of uh, of more about really and all we're doing here is just adding in the uh, or some more grass areas to sort of overlap the track itself so as I say this actually is still a working train yard but obviously not all the tracks are going to be used and certainly in the build I'm doing here um, for the Walking Dead there'll be a lot more overgrown foliage areas depending on how you look at the actual uh, series itself whether it's uh, a few years into zombie festation or if you want to class it as or, if, or it could be a few weeks in which case this wouldn't be as overgrown but to create that ambience I wanted to do that and that's one thing that I do love about this game now um, the fact we've got so many different variations of plant grass trees and foliage you can create absolutely amazing and different textures from everyone else um, the combinations you can create now you can go overkill and add 10 20 different types in one sector and as long as you use the right ones you can get some amazing realistic views and the way I like to build my foliage up is pretty much start from the bottom so we've got the dirt texture on the floor followed by some grass bushes trees and sort of build your way up um, one thing I've seen a lot of is people who just add trees and then there's nothing underneath it and if you look at certain angles you don't quite get the realism that some people want to achieve now we're moving back over to the industrial site just next door to Terminus and we've been using again P. Delmo's trees, um, sort of dead bushes etc to really create the sort of rundown area that this is meant to be and this is a, an old sort of car park um, that we're trying to recreate here so all the concrete's going to be very damaged and uh, a lot of dirt and muck over the road etc so again using all the decals that we've got to are available in our artillery we will be using that over there and I really like this uh, creation I made using these bushes so in the end I actually just used the move it mod tool to uh, copy and paste the uh, parts over and I still feel that the workshop doesn't have enough um, buildings of run down, destroyed, etc. And I understand why. Um, obviously, this series is very niche in the sort of type of buildings that I'm requiring, and the help that I've had already from people um, within the modding community has been absolutely amazing. And again, without them, this sort of a build would be very difficult to get to the level that I've managed to get it to so far. Um, so again a big thanks to everyone that's all so far has been involved in anything that's to do with this um, project and obviously anyone else who wants to be involved in this or create anything along the lines of uh, abandoned and destructed by all means do so and drop a link in the description there'll be a lot of people who will be interested um, in, in such a such builds now just going off topic slightly um, I've now decided on the next build for the walking dead and we start in a couple of weeks time i want to sort of take a bit of a step back from the series and you know make sure i've got all the props i need all the custom buildings that i need as well so i can really replicate exactly what i'm trying to achieve i mean that's always going to be the difficulty with builds such as this you are going to need to have buildings that are pretty much identical to what you're building otherwise it won't quite look as realism and it will be doing the game an injustice because the game is so realistic it, it deserves to have have that availability to it so we'll be starting the next build which will be the lovely lovely town of Alexandria and we'll be starting work on that I've already got a lot of props and uh, custom assets built by people involved in the project and it's just gonna be a bit of time now to get a few more buildings built up um, so we can really get this looking good so I'd say towards the end of the month you'll be seeing episode one of the build so keep your eyes open for that and again 
any other builds you want to see me do within the Walking Dead series, let me know. I know the prison has been one that's been suggested a lot of, um, but that's going to take a lot of work in terms of getting custom assets built. But let me know what you want to see and I will look at it and we will see what we can do. So anyway, back on task, we're just creating this barrier around the uh, build. Like I said earlier, I like to always enclose these builds in to, uh, to make them look as best, as good as I can, really. Um, so a bit more uh, vehicles on the floors. And as I say, this whole area is a lot, a very rundown area. So I really wanted to keep that theme going. And the, the lovely fences by Ronix really do suit this area well. And... Uh, I can see already from a lot of people designing builds have been using these fences a lot so it's great to see that uh, these fences are being used elsewhere than just my project and uh, obviously with the talent of Ronix they do look absolutely amazing. Now this next section we're going to be working on in the bottom left hand corner is actually a housing sort of development area. Um, but again, I didn't want to take the emphasis off the terminus build. So in the end, I just decided to cover this in the concrete and decals I've already created elsewhere and sort of just leave that as a, an open area. It's not like for like in terms of the build, but sometimes you need to make some adjustments to suit the surroundings. So this was just more of a filler area that we were going to add in just to sort of close off the actual design. Um, and again, just using the fences around here certainly does give that a feeling of this is an area where you know construction is and it's a run down sort of zone Now the last stage of the project is just adding a few more props and details and quirky little ideas. So as I say, this was a rundown area, but I still wanted to create some sort of train activity here. So we just added some, well, just a single train here, um, just to sort of give that feeling that it's uh, just being left here in the open. A few extra trailers here and there, just to show that there was activity here and make it look a bit more like a rail yard um, and in this corner here like I said earlier I wanted to try and make this look like it was once a used facility um, and we've added in the train carriages um, and we end up putting one right at the front which is actually the one where um, Rick and co get trapped in in the episode of Terminus and what we're doing here this is the backstage and this is actually one of the areas that was used in the filming of the set and there's a little shootout here, if I recall correctly. So I wanted to create something here um, to sort of replicate that storyline. So uh, we've got the truck in the corner there and some other sort of boxes, etc. cetera. Um, all things that, you know, you'd expect to see here, whether it's been taken over by zombies or not. So I wanted to create that sort of feeling that, you know, some of these boxes and stuff may still be used. There could be items in there that are required and could help people survive longer. But also the fact of it's all been, you know, already been looted um, and things aren't all as they seem. I did get carried away a little bit with these air conditioning units, but they do look really, really good. And uh, looking at the builds, they are regularly onto these buildings. So a little detail there that I added in. And I wanted to use some of the uh, rubbish areas as well, the rubbish 
props, what you want to, whatever you want to class them as, just to add them in. And another thing that I love about the Move It mod tool, look at this, I can now add some boxes inside a trailer, which is it's brilliant. I love those little quirky things you're able to do now with this design. So adding the last few little bits in this zone, we can then move on to the last stage of the build. And I wanted to make sure I had a few cars in this area as well. Um, watching the series, there are a lot of cars that have been blown up or left and abandoned. So I wanted to put a few of those around and create some sort of a story in terms of, you know, there are still cars around and they're not all sort of disappeared. There are some activity of, of vehicles. So this is the one I wanted to use here as the main focal point to the screenshot, which is the one which I wanted to sort of resemble as the one that Rick and Co got stuck in. Well, not stuck in, they got trapped in and pushed in. Um, and then just add some of these Jeeps from, I believe, Billy Monkey, who does some great work. Again, check out his, uh, his workshop. He's also been one of the guys working with me on this project and has been doing some amazing work. And that brings us very close to the end of this episode. We are now just adding the final touches and these are the bits I love doing. I love getting to this stage where you've built the basis and now you just want to add those extra little props, the little quirky things that really tell a different story to what they perhaps told earlier on. And as you can see here, I put down the this mat, well, this derailed train um, that I've already used before um, in the very first episode of the Atlanta Skyline. Um, and adding a few more little bits and bobs here but that's pretty much it guys I'm gonna leave you with some cinematics of the overall build let me know your thoughts and comments if you enjoyed the video please hit that like button if you're not following already please subscribe to the channel for future videos I've been Pug Gaming thank you very much for watching and I will see you all very very soon all the best
street. 